Welcome. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to use the command line capture utility NMCAP. So if you've used the UI at all, you might be thinking to yourself, how do I capture with triggers or with certain time limits? Or perhaps how do I do different buffer settings like a different circular buffer size or using chain captures, for instance? Or perhaps I want to capture in a scripted fashion. How do I do that? Well, NMCAP, this command line utility, is your friend, and it's included in all versions of Network Monitor 3, but the latest version has some new features. So the first thing is that it's in the path. If you open up a command prompt, you should be able to run NMCAP, and I will, and I'll go ahead and I'll just give it the option to give me help, which is the question mark command. And of course, you'll see that there's a lot of options here. And this is because it's very flexible. And it also allows scripting of NMCAP if you want to use it in a batch file, for instance. Another design feature of NMCAP is that it was designed for high performance capturing. So this means it'll drop fewer frames. And it is more configurable in the sense that you can set the buffer sizes so that you can capture more information safely. And if you're going to let somebody else, a customer, or somebody get a capture for you, this might be an e easier option for you because you can just send a command line or a batch file even to execute what you need to execute. So next, let's talk about the basic capture syntax. And in this example, I'm going to do something very straightforward. I typed in net nmcap and I'm going to specify slash network and star, meaning I want to capture on all network interfaces. The next command is the command to say I want to capture this data. And then you could put a filter, but I'm going to leave this blank for now. Next parameter is the slash file command, and it tells what file you want to save to. So I'm going to do test.cap. And I'm also going to say right now that you can put other options on the end but we're going to leave that blank. Now, a couple of things have changed since Network Monitor 3.1. In particular, we have a new feature that buffers the frames before we process them so that we won't drop frames. This buffer will grow until your disk quota is consumed. So this has the potential that even with a filter on, you might be using up disk space because we have to process the filter. And because we have to process this filter, we can't sacrifice dropping frames. So we buffer them up and then we process them as fast as we can. So one thing to keep an eye on is that when you start a capture at the bottom, it shows you some different fields here. And the first one is the receive. That's the number of received frames that have arrived at your machine. The next one is the pending frames. This tells you how many frames the engine has not processed yet. So if this number continues to grow over time, this could cause the buffer to get filled up once we meet the disk quota, and then you might drop frames at that point. So keep your eye on this while you're capturing. Then we also have the saved frames. This is the number of frames that you've actually captured in your capture file. Now if you've set a filter up, this number might be smaller than the number you received because the filter applies this number. And the last note of interest on this page is dropped count. So now we'll actually display how many frames have been dropped. So if you see this number go up, then you really know that you're in a situation you're dropping frames and either the network is really, really fast or like I said before, you're overrunning the buffer we've created for you. Now, as it continues to capture, I didn't really tell it when to stop. So there's two pieces of information up here. We have the command that we're going to use to exit the capture, since I didn't put any exit criteria. And then there's also, it tells you that saving info to this line right here, using a circular buffer of 20 megs. So it tells you that information. That's the default, and you can change those if you want to. So I'm going to hit Control-C 
And now you can see that the capture stopped. And if I do a, a directory of the file, you can see that it's there and it's 25K. So the next thing I want to show you is how to do a circular capture. And it's very much the same except for the configuration of the file parameter. So again, I'm going to do test.cap, but this time I'm going to put a colon and type in 50m. So this means that we want to capture for a 50 meg, and by default it's circular buffer. So and now I'm going to show you a different option, and this is the chain capture. So in this example, I'm creating test and you add the extension CHN on the end, that tells it to create a chain capture, and I'm going to do each chain or each capture file will be a max of one megabyte. So once it reaches one meg in size, it rolls over to the next capture file. And I've already done this, so I'm going to list these out. And so you see the resulting files are the test.cap, And then this is the second one. It puts a one, test1.cap. So that shows you the circular capture, changing the buffer size there, and the chain capture, which are two great options for providing a longer capture session and also making the files more manageable. So now let's go over a quick example where we we'll use a filter. So you use all the same parameters, network, star, slash capture, but now you add in a filter. So this filter can be a same filter that you use in the UI. So I could say I want to capture all TCP traffic or HTTP traffic, for instance. If you do have to add quotes, then you'll want to use single quotes inside the double quotes. And in some cases, you can get away without using the quotes. However, the syntax of some of the commands, such as the uh, or operator that you can also use will confuse the command line. So just be careful with that. Um, so you can even get more particular. I'll do tcp.port equal 80. And then again, you add the capture file on the end of this. So let's zoom in on that a little bit and see that we've added the, the line right here and we've done it in quotes. And then again, the file name that you're going to capture too. The next command I'm going to talk about is the disk quota. There's two ways to set the disk quota, and I'm going to show you the help for this again. And I'll go up to the top, and you'll see that there's two options called the min disk quota percentage and the min disk quota. So these two values allow you to set the quota for the amount of disk space you want allowed to remain open. So if you're on a system where you can't spare all the disk space, you might want to change this. You can see that the default size is actually 20% here. Finally, I want to show you a simple way to get help. And we have this command called slash examples. And it will actually show you a bunch of common samples and tips for using NMCAP. So if you want to look at this for examples for maybe some ideas of what you can do, this is a great way to discover how to use NMCAP. And one I'll point out right here is that with NMCAP you can use an input capture file. So you can use NMCAP to do processing such as taking a capture file and parsing out everything that's port 80 traffic for instance. So finally, that's the end of the basic usage of NMCAP. I'll have another video with more advanced things, like for instance, how to set triggers using stop when and start when with a filter or with a time. And we'll also go over some more advanced things. Hope that was helpful, and we'll see you again later.